Hi all. I wanted to share something very powerful with you that I came across quite recently. Um, I'm reading a phenomenal book at the moment called The Physics of Consciousness by Evan Harris Walker, um, who was and perhaps still is a um, professor of physics um, at a university in the United States. And he's put together this very phenomenal book that looks at uh, and certainly demystify some of the more esoteric parts of quantum science that uh, we can all easily get lost in. Uh, but I wanted to share something with you that uh, has been extremely powerful for, for myself and for my clients alike, um, that has really come off the back of, of reading some of this book. Uh, now, just to introduce some of the fundamental tenets of quantum physics, as I understand them, um, quantum science is looking at the uh, the science and behavior of what are referred to as subatomic particles, i.e., uh, the, the smallest and fundamental um, essential elements that make us up. Um, and not only the substructure and the the, the, the fabric of, of who we are, but of, of everything in, in the known universe. So the subatomic particles. Now. Um, subatomic particles behave in a very um, unusual way uh, and certainly unlike the um, particles that are a lot larger, which can be explained by Newtonian physics. Uh, an example of Newtonian physics would be a billiard ball hits another billiard ball and at a certain speed and that second billiard ball will travel a certain distance. Um, subatomic particles behave um, a lot more unusually, not least of which is the act of a scientist observing subatomic particles in a lab will affect the, the, the particles themselves. So in short, the observer has an effect on that which is being observed. So to boil that down, it can be said that the very consciousness or mind of the observer is affecting the observee. So that's the fundamental that's the fundamental tenet of quantum science number one. The observer has an impact on that which is being observed. That's fine. There's a second part to this which is even more interesting uh, that was um, evidenced by Dr. Masaru Moto in Japan um, who looked at the uh, crystallization of water molecules around certain types of music. For example, beautiful classical music or very aggressive music. Um, that was one of his experiments. And what it showed was that water, water's, water will crystallize in a very beautiful, symmetrical way around, um, around very lovely classical music versus um, aggressive music, which would create more asymmetrical um, patterns. Um, in my own uh, healing uh, practice, what I notice is that, and, and just from my own studies, in, in interrelationships and, and psychology, um, we can see that there's a second observable pattern with quantum science, and that it's not just the act of observation, but also the quality and type of, of, of observation. So, where we observe something with absolute love and non judgment, that seems to have a force multiplying effect on the speed with which someone heals. Um, in the same way, uh, if we sit with someone in absolute judgment, you can feel that. Um, we're not these very dense um, blocks of, of meat and, 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 uh, and fibers and tendons. We're very subtle vibrational creatures. And therefore, we can pick up on um, if someone's secretly being very judgmental, even if they're not vocalizing it, we can feel it. Um, that's because we are, by our nature, vibrational. Okay, so just to, to cover those two points again, so the act of observation has an impact on that which is being observed, and the type and quality. So if, if we view with love, uh, that will have an effect on the subatomic structure of the person you're with. If you observe with anger, that too will have its own effect. So what this book has really demonstrated to me is that consciousness uh, cannot be taken out of the 
quantum store integration. It's a fundamental part of it. Taking that much further, um, and I want to bring divinity into play here. If our true nature is divine love, which you know thousands of spiritual texts will have said for th over thousands of years, independently of each other from all different parts of the world, our true source is divine love, perfect love. What and and the, the properties of, of divine love are that it's eternal, that it's infinite, um, and that it's maximal. Now, what I mean by that is that you can bring all of divine love um, into the moment now. That's what I mean by maximal. So in order to really tip the balance when it comes to healing and when it comes to your own mind, and bearing in mind anything that comes up in your consciousness can be said to be part of it. We're not disconnected. So to really affect a shift, to cause a qualitative shift in your own healing or the healing of someone else, all you need to do is bring all of divine love and all of divine light into your experience uh, of that person, of that event, of that thought now. Okay. Uh, in doing so, that is when we can allow the miracle to occur. So that's the first powerful healing accelerator, to bring all of divine love and all of divine light into your direct experience of something now. Okay. The second accelerator I wanted to share with you uh, is a very powerful uh, clearing or healing prayer that I've been using again a lot with clients and even with myself. Now, this is taken from the idea that whenever we're uh, sick or whenever we are unhappy, um, that sickness or unhappiness is really just a set of symptoms that reflect something a lot deeper. Um, if you will, there is a root cause at play that has its echo, and that echo can be said to be the, the set of symptoms or, or, or experiences in that moment. Now, the Course in Miracles course says, underneath each sickness is a specific form of unforgiveness. So it's the unconscious unforgivenesses, these grievances, these set of um, somatically felt um, suppressed anger or fear from traumatic events from our past that are locked into the cells. And it's this that is said to cause disease. So a very powerful way to unlock a disease and to heal it is to uncover the root cause. Um, so here are two ways to to heal the root cause. Now, given the fact that it's, it can be quite difficult, especially if you're not working with a healer, to sometimes find the root cause, this is a way to clear it without really having to know what it is, because this can be buried under decades of life, and it can even be a past life thing as well. So all we say is, dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for allowing me to forgive the root cause of this issue now. Now, if you say that three times, in my experience, that has a very, very powerful effect in clearing out um, the sources of unwellness. Okay. Um, now, in an article, I've explained exactly why I've used the format of that prayer. Um, for example, why do I say thank you at the beginning? Um, why am I saying thank you for allowing me to forgive the root cause of this? It's a very sequenced, powerful prayer that has demonstrable effects. Now, the third powerful healing accelerator is this technique I use to then figure out what the root cause is, um, because that can be extremely powerful as well. The way we do that is to say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for showing me what I need to forgive for. Um, a lot of people have a problem with the word forgive. All it really means is to let go, to forego. Um, and it just, in my experience, to use that exact 
sentence, Heavenly Father, thank you for showing me what I need to forgive him, it's almost quite a provocative question which will bring up and, and dredge up uh, the, the grievances from the past. Now, for some that's scary, but all we're really doing is digging down into the substrata within, deep down in the psyche, uh, to, 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 to be shown what it is we're still holding on to at those deep levels. Once we're shown what it is, so you might be given a set of memories or circumstances from our past where our parents might have really fallen off the handle with us or got very angry with us or a teacher might have been extremely cross in, in some way or any number of different grievances that we're still holding on to. Once we're shown that, it's then very, very important then to let it go. The way to let it go is to bring, again, all of divine light and all of divine love into whatever the memory was. Okay. Uh, and that way we can clear it very powerfully. So here ends the very, very short um, clip. But I just wanted to share that with you because it's been extremely powerful with, uh, within my healing practice. And um, if you want to chat further about it, please do. Um, please email me um, at dansainsbury.healing at gmail.com or via, via Facebook, where you can find me at Daniel Christopher Sainsbury. Uh, and um, look forward to being in contact with you very soon. Thank you.